Chapter 6, The Final Chapter of Smoke Ellie lay face down. Her ears rang and hurt from the explosions, but she could still hear the sound of the trees crashing to the ground behind her. Ellie tried to get up, but she felt dizzy and weak. She rolled over to her side and felt the backpack press against her. The kittens didn't make a sound. Sylvie, Ellie called faintly. Sylvie was laying a few feet away. She moaned and tried to push herself up. Ellie crawled towards her. We've got to move away from the trees, Ellie said. They're falling all around us. All right, Sylvie gasped. I'll try. Ellie managed barely to help Sylvie to her feet. They staggered a few yards further before a wave of dizziness swept over Ellie. She felt sick to her stomach. We've got to keep going, she told herself, but she didn't know if they could. Suddenly, a pair of strong hands took hold of her. Ellie looked up to see her mother. Her father and brother stood by her side. Nacho was wagging his tail behind them. How did you find us? Ellie asked. Nacho brought us, Hector replied. Ellie glanced at the panting dog. Thanks, Nacho. I guess we're even now, she smiled. Ellie's father picked her up in his arms and carried her toward the house. Sylvie, Ellie moaned. We have her, sis, Hector said gently. Don't worry. He carried the little girl in his arms. My backpack, my backpack, Sylvie was crying. Shh, Nina, I'll bring it, Mrs. Martinez said. They all headed back toward the house. Mr. Martinez lay Ellie down on a blanket in the back of a pickup truck. Hector eased Sylvie down next to her. Then Hector went off to look for some medical help. How do you two feel, Mrs. Martinez asked. She had brought out some water and more blankets. A little better, Ellie replied. She sipped from a cup of water and passed it to Sylvie. The dizziness was beginning to fade away. Me too, Sylvie added. We sent a message to your parents, Mr. Martinez told Sylvie. Mr. Dietrich had reached them earlier, and they thought they'd find you at your house. They're on their way from there now. Sylvie hung her head. Are they really mad at me? Mr. Martinez squeezed her hand. I think right now they'll just be happy you're all right, he said. But they might be mad later. We just got the message ourselves that you two jumped from Mr. Dietrich's truck. That's when we saw Nacho barking for us. Why did you do such a reckless and dangerous thing? Ellie and Sylvie answered at the same time. The kittens. Ellie reached for the backpack her mother had put down beside her. Inside the backpack, the five little bodies were still. Then Ellie began to take them out. They're alive, she cheered, cradling two of the meowing animals in her arms. You went back for kittens? Mrs. Martinez asked. I'll explain later, Ellie said. Her mother's eyes narrowed. You most certainly will. Ellie saved my life, Sylvie told Mr. and Mrs. Martinez. If she hadn't come after me, I never would have made it. I couldn't leave her out there alone, Ellie explained. Mrs. Martinez smiled. We understand, she said. Then she held Ellie's hand. At that moment, a ranger came running up to Mr. Martinez. We have a break, she said with excitement. We have an effective break. The helicopters are going to drop some chemicals and we can move in there to try to put the fire out. And we should have medical aid for these girls here any minute now. Everyone looked exhausted, but somehow happy. Is it really over? Ellie asked her father. Only if they can keep the fire contained until it burns out, he replied. It's still spreading in other areas, but at least we were able to get it under control at this end. Mrs. Martinez kissed her daughter. Our home is safe. And so is yours, Sylvie, the ranger told her. All right, Sylvie cheered. I have to go help the other firefighters, Mr. Martinez said. You two girls stay put this time, he said to the girls. They looked sheepish as Mr. Martinez and the ranger left. Half an hour later, trucks filled, the firefi filled with firefighters pulled up to the house. Sylvie saw her father jump out of the trucks. He brought a, ca a cat carrier over to the girls. Inside, a cat was complaining in loud meows. Ellie and Sylvie looked at each other. Rufus? Ellie asked. Rufus, Sylvie nodded. Sylvie hugged Ellie. Thanks for saving my life, she told her. You're a pretty good babysitter. You think so? Ellie smiled. Just wait until your parents get my bill.